Kalen King, thanks for coming on the official Heisman Trophy podcast. How you doing? I'm good. Appreciate you for having me, man. So how's your offseason been, and what did you do different this year to prepare for uh, the coming season? Uh, my offseason has been pretty good. You know, I've just been just focusing on the little things that I feel like I have to get better on coming from last season. And one of the biggest things that I really, like, dove into more was film study and, like, route concepts and route recognition and things of those nature, just, just so I can set myself up to make uh, more plays than just going out there naturally and just reacting. Given the high pressure situations that cornerbacks are often in, how, how do you mentally prepare yourself for games, especially when you know you're going to go up against some top tier receivers? Uh, I feel like mm, it's not really a really a mental preparation. I feel like anytime I take the field, my mentality is the same. You know, I try to I try to keep the next play my priority. Like rather that be like. Um, if if I give up a, a, a catch one play, I try not to let that linger on and, and lead to more, you feel me, things that I don't want to happen. Like, so I just keep a, a short play mentality next play. If something happens one play, I try to forget about it and focus on the next one. When you're studying film uh, opposing teams, uh, what do you look for in the opposing quarterback and in opposing receivers? Well, in opposing receivers, I just look at, like, their tendencies, how they are off the line, if they're good versus press, you know, their top routes, um, the target. Like, I watch film, and I, I go through all their targets and, like, the key plays, see if they're a willing blocker and things of that nature. But as far as quarterbacks, I just feel like, you know, I, I go off, like, um, which way he scrambles, you know, which side of the field he's, he's, uh, he throws to more often, what are his good routes, what are his good passes, what, is, what does he throw to the most, and things of that nature, so. Yeah. Can you recall a play where you got beat or made a mistake? And how, how did you go afterwards and analyze it? And uh, what did you learn from those from that play? I mean, anytime I have a play where I'm either beat or it's a bad play on my part, I try not to worry about it in the moment. You know, I try to, you know, just keep playing that that situation or drive. And then when I, once I get back to the sideline, we got our staff on the sideline, Coach Terry, Coach Bryce and Coach Ola. You know, they, they're always there to talk me through what they seen out there and what I did. So anytime I'm out there, man, I just, you know, try to forget about it and worry about the next right. play. Really. How do you adapt your, your – excuse me. How do you adapt your strategy based on if you're going up against a really tall, big receiver or against a speedster? Oh, uh, like things uh, things like that, like it'll, it'll change, like, my technique some. Like, say if I'm going against, like, a, I know a guy who can really blow the top off. He's a very good vertical threat. He has great speed. I might play him a little, like, off. Like, off, I might back up, like, one yard, you know, just to give myself some space, give myself some room because I know he can go. And, like, for as far as, like, big receivers, you know, I feel like um, they're not really as quick as me, so I feel like I can, I can, I can do a good job sitting in there and playing them and matching them with, like, a little more closed space, so, yeah. Switching gears a little bit, who would you say is the greatest cornerback of all time? Oh my God, that's a that's a that's a. In my opinion, like me personally, I I feel like there's no great like I don't I feel like there's no best cornerback of all time because like it's you could say Deion Sanders, but then again, you could say Darrell Revis because Darrell Revis was like the best man-to-man -man corner I've ever seen with my two eyes. So it's like, I don't, I really don't know. And I, and I also grew up watching Charles Woodson a lot. So, man, those three guys are really like my top three. And if I had to choose between all three of them, I don't think I would be able to. So, Well, that's a great, that's a great top just, three, I think, give you three names. for anybody's list. Uh, what do you like the most about playing college football? The, the, the fun, the atmosphere, especially being at Penn State. Like, I feel like we have – the best fan base slash game game atmosphere in the nation. So, you know, just just taking the field every day and just seeing all those fans repping repping the school and just just being here every day. Like that's that's really the most fun about college football. Really, the atmosphere and like when the when the lights are on, how how much of a great program Penn State can be. What's it like coming out on the field during a whiteout? best feeling I ever seen I ever had in my life like I remember my freshman year when I came out for the whiteout it was like man that was the that was my first time ever you feel me witnessing it because I never I've never even been to a whiteout before I came here so my freshman year was the first time I actually was at a whiteout and it was it was crazy man I'll never forget that 
What's it like playing with your twin brother, Kobe, not only on the same team, but on the same side of the ball? Yeah, man, it's it's a blessing because, like, you know, me and Kobe, we've been playing together our whole life, really. But so, like, as far as that aspect, like, it's the same. But, like, now it's just almost, like, more people are watching. It's at a broader spectrum. More eyes are on you. And, like, it's more at stake. So, yeah. Who's been a significant influence in your life outside of football? And, and describe to me uh, how they influenced you. Outside of football, my dad, man, my dad is like really the whole reason I I'm I take football this serious because like he used to he used to instill it in me and Kobe when we was younger. Like uh, we used to wake up six a.m. We we like six five six seven years old. We used to wake up at six a.m. and run three miles with with him. He that that's when I knew like he used to do the workouts with us. So like, and this would be every day like almost every day like he used to bang on our doors like it came to a point like he he made like a custom beat on the door <laughs> and I knew every time I heard that beat on the door I knew what time it was so yeah my dad definitely man he's a he's the biggest reason why I'm, I'm at where I'm at today so definitely my father was that a process that was hard to go through at the time but later on you're like gosh I'm glad he did that glad was, glad he pushed me at the time I hated it like I hated it I hated it. Every time I heard the banging, I just, I knew it was time to work out, and I hated it, man. I didn't want to get up some days. I wanted to stay in the bed, but, like, now that I look back at it, man, like, he only did that for the better of us. So. At what point yeah. did you decide, obviously, you were uh, you played three sports in, in high school, and uh, did, did you think, I'm going to be a cornerback, or was it one of those things where it's like, hey, this is where I'm best suited, so th this is where I'm going to focus? Yeah, I'll, like, I'll say when I first started playing, like, when I was, like, fresh into football, I didn't really play cornerback. But I'll say around, like, um, I'll say around sixth grade. That's when I – no, nah, fifth grade is when I started playing cornerback. Like, that's when I started playing both sides of the ball. I used to play running back and cornerback. And I was I was actually better at running back for, like, a little period of time. And then once I got to high school, that's when I really, like, really made the transition to cornerback because I wasn't really the biggest. I was, like, coming to high school, I was probably, like, 5'9", 160. So I was like, nah, running back might not be the best option for me. So, right. you know, I went to cornerback. And then ever since then, man, I just – I fell in love with the position. Like I told you, my dad, he always used to show me videos about, um, like, Charles Woodson and, and um, Chant Bailey and Deion Sanders and just all the greats that he used to watch growing up. So, like, man, I already had the cornerback, like, mentality in me once once I made the transition. So, like, at that point, it was just me just putting everything I had into it and just taking it as far as I could. What um, – I hear you want to be a sports analyst. What, who's the sports analyst who uh, who you admire or who you, who you watch a lot? I watch a lot of Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. Stephen A. Smith, like, I feel like he's the best in the, in the business, man. Like, from from podcast to radio talk to to TV shows to TV series, like, he he does it all, man. And, like, I feel like after my sports career is over, like, I want to start getting into things of that nature. Like, I like first take with Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless. Like, I like those, like, heated debates about sports. So, I feel like I can I can be one of those guys. If you're talking to friends, do you do you have, like, a quick take ready to go? about sports all the t all the time man all the time <laughs> my 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 most my most used quick take is lebron being the best player in to ever touch a basketball so you know i argue with people about that since i was a little kid but they don't never they don't ever agree with me but i don't see how you can't agree with me it's the but lebron that's, it's that's the lebron that, versus man. jordan debate that's always going on right is that the the debate yep. everyone's getting into yep. yep okay here's a chance for a quick take sometimes oh sorry go ahead uh, I was about to say sometimes like they start comparing LeBron to KD and it's like nah that's like that's disrespectful like you can't do that. But yeah. Well, here's a chance for a quick take. What who's the toughest receiver or the or the most difficult receiver you've played that you've had to cover? Uh, the most I say the toughest receiver I ever had to cover. It was two. Okay, so I'm gonna give you my high school in high school. Then I'm gonna give you in college. Okay. Okay. Is that cool? Sure. So in high school, uh, I had to guard Antonio Gates Jr. And, you know, me and him, like, he's from Detroit as well. He grew up, We grew up together. We played on the same little league team. So, 
ever since we was like nine, ten. I've been I've been guarding him since we was like little. So like when we got to high school, it was like I already knew like what time it was. Like we've been I've been competing with him since I've been growing up. So like I knew he was a good player. He knew I was a good player, and it was just like every time we seen each other, it was like we was competing going at right. it. And as far as college, Marvin Harrison definitely is the best receiver I ever guarded. Just off the fact, like, he's a big body. He's got good speed, runs good routes, you know, and things like he has the total package. So, definitely those two guys are the toughest guys I've ever seen. Now, you're going into your junior year. You had a fantastic sophomore year, uh, 30 tackles, 21 pass breakups, three interceptions. Uh, The next year uh, coming up, we have four new teams in the Big Ten. Now, uh, if you do come back or if that ends up being the case, uh, which of those four teams, uh, USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington, which one of those four teams would you most like to play? Uh, I haven't really thought about that now. Um, but I'm not going to lie. USC would be a good team to play just because, like, they're from Cali, right? And I hope we play them, like, away because I always wanted to, like, play in Cali, like, play football in, like, the Coliseum and – Cause that's a, that's a real like nice stadium. So, but I mean, I ain't really thought of that. But yeah. So one of the things we're trying to do on the official Heisman Trophy podcast is just bring the best players of the country on the podcast, regardless of position. Everyone talks about the quarterbacks most of the time, and we just want the best players coming on so that they can get a platform. Uh, and so, just thinking about Heisman, who were some of the Heisman winners in the past that you have memories of? Heisman winners in the past that I have memories of Charles Woodson. Can never forget him. Right. He's the only cornerback to win it. I can never forget that. Um, no, Johnny Manzo was crazy. He was he was one of the most electric guys I ever seen. Um, Reggie Bush, man. When I when Reggie Bush was in college, man, I used to I used to go crazy, man. Um, uh, who else I got? Didn't Cam Newton win the Heisman? He did win the Heisman. Yep, Cam Newton. That was another one. And mm, Devontae Smith. I remember when Devontae Smith won the Heisman that year, he went crazy. Probably the, one of the best single season receiving seasons that I've seen. So, yeah. Okay, let's say you're a Heisman Trophy voter and you're looking at all the players in the country and you're thinking, I want to look at some cornerbacks. And if you're watching a game and you're a voter – what would you have him look for or have her look for uh, in a cornerback? What, sh- what should the voter be looking at from a cornerback to, to try to, to try to gauge how good the player is? So as far as cornerbacks, I feel like the voter should, you know, look at the all around game of that or the cornerback. So, for example, like coverage is definitely would be one of the most important. Um, I say tackling. I would say instincts. Just like, just like everything that makes a player well-rounded. Like I feel like, if if a corner was to win the Heisman, it would have to be like the most well-rounded corner, you know, who does it all. Like does everything. It doesn't lack in any certain area. Just like he's a very complete corner. That's that's. I feel like those are the corners that I like that I gravitate to the most. So, yeah. So for yourself, what would be some areas where you would work on to become that complete corner? Do you think? So some areas uh, that I would work on to become a more complete corner, I would say um, just things such as, like I was saying, um, route recognition and and uh, formation recognition before the snap, just putting myself in position to where I know what's coming before it actually happens, which can allow me to make a little more plays. And, you know, just things like that. Kalen King, thanks for coming on the official Heisman Trophy podcast. We wish you best of luck this season. You got a big one against West Virginia coming up next Saturday. Uh, all the best and for a, for a healthy and productive season to you and to your team. Yes. Yes, sir. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're